all right what's going on everybody so we're about to get into the emr build how to build them like a jet all right so first up kind of want to go over how i have them built because mounted units with him being specific mounted units only don't use anything else like there is there's no need you're wasting your time if you're not building him with full calf so let's get into his item setup because he's very he's not contingent on it but you want to have him set up for items specifically so i might not have him set up with every perfect item but some of them are throw on but let's just get into it a little bit um so got him set up with a really nice spear got this out of the pack for how you um how you get them so speed um mounted units that was nice and then after this commander hits um it's got a really nice special effect nonetheless that's kind of what i'm getting at um this throw on he's he doesn't use focus um but I really need to change it out. This will get thrown on someone else next season. This isn't designed for him at all. Um, Horseman Helm, though, this is actually really good. Another um, mounted unit um, effect. And then he has a really good, light like, cavalry um, damage shell on secondary attack. Fiddle, this is so useless, but I don't have that many. Um, Got to work with what you got. And I was really just hoping for the army speed. And then, um, hey, look, I've got ints. I'll never get ints. But, hey, we got some int speed. But, so let's get on to um, Portrait. So, Rohirian, every single Cav person, Eowyn, Theoden, and uh, Eomor, um, you're going to want to max this first. I feel like, nonetheless, this is just such a good ability, and it's part of why they do so much damage. So much damage. So, we're just going to full max this first. But, let's just say you were wanting to start him for whatever reason. Um, you start Rohan, and... I think starting Rohan, think you get more Cav at the start. So if you want to run full Cav at the start, which I don't recommend, you're going to want to run this, but you would also want to tag team doing Cleave and possibly running Writing Excellence. I actually think this is actually really good. Um, it's just overall damage received reduction rather than up here. It's just defense. I think this is good. I think damage received overall as a percentage point is going to be a little bit better than going up here on the mark of the Marshall Tree. So... If you're, um, I would dual command this at the same time. I would get it up to about three right here. I wouldn't max it because with this one specifically, a lot like how I build um, some of the other people, you have to spread out their ability points. You want to go all into one tree, kind of like how I did with Rohirian, except for um, Cleave and Writing Excellence. This right here, his middle ability is also really good. Mark of the Marshal is also really good though. I mean, both of these are killer. Both the, even his last tree. This is one of those guys where you really have to think about how you want to specialize in. Because he can do a lot of things really well. Um, a lot like Theoden, which I'll do a full review on him. But I haven't tested him out yet. So I don't really want to do a full review on him. Kind of like, I'm not going to do a full review on someone I haven't tested out extensively. So, um, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Eadig? Eadig? But... Um, so let's just max, let's just, I'm not going to max it out, not going to max it out, but I'm going to go up to five right here. I believe actually six. So, cause these skills are so good. So you want to go ahead and get this up, get this. Let's just go ahead and get this up to three, get this up to three. Mark of the Marshal though, against one enemy in it deals 33%. Eomor gains speed for one round. So this is also going to help. With everything else that he's also specializing in, he's a big speed monster. So he needs to be the fastest on the field anyway. So let's just go ahead and get this up here. So I would actually go up to six on this. Go ahead and do up to six on that swing. That's two enemy targets. That's not just one. That's the reason why you see a lower number, of course. Just, But you're against two enemy targets. So this guy is just a damage machine on full calf. So Eord Leader. I don't have it unlocked, but I will suggest... That you need to spread out your points on him efficiently because up here on flanking i went over this on faramir this is what really what makes faramir really good is that against prioritizes ranged units this is so good i actually just went up and i'll show the battle report here in a second um about why this is so good about why this is, if i had this skill it would change the fight completely um your leader this is really good um I'm saying that about every skill on this guy because he's just that good, in my opinion. Um, so every round, 75% chance of the mounted unit, specifically um, recovering 3% HP. And that is, so you would want to have three, not two, three mounted units because this goes to all three groups. So you want to have, in my opinion, you want to have, 
if you're Rohan, run the Marshals, Bocav, and Cataphracts. Um, on my team, it's a bit hard, or I should say for Gondor, it's way harder to run Swan Knights because they're garbage, um, in my opinion. There's almost no way to run them efficiently. Um, so Arrowed Leader, if this is maxed, you know, if, in the ideal world, if you have a bunch of respect points to give him, um, this is really good to max over these two. But you could also make the opinion of maxing out his full damage potential, which is this right here down the middle tree and just uh, Attack of the Vitals and Call the Weak. Um, if you want full damage, max these out. Because um, there is no perfect way to build this guy, um, unlike Faramir, where he kind of has like a one and done set tree, in my opinion. Um, it's the two um, paths that I showed in the video. Um, this right here, mounted combat. This is so good. On hit, mounted units, 20% chance of dealing an additional 10% damage. This goes well with Rohim, Ro, Rohirrim. I don't know how to pronounce that in. But this stacks really well with this because you already have a bunch of might. And on hit, you're already dealing a bunch more damage. And that's for all mounted units. And then up here, flanking. This is such a good ability. You might just want to max Arid Leader for his damage potential. So, um, with this one specifically, though, because I don't have them maxed, I would go towards the middle tree right here because it gives speed. Now, this one also gives speed as well, but I like maxing out these two trees a little bit more than going down the other two paths. So, right here, right here. And then for the last little bit, I'll go down here and round up Cleave. So this is where I'm going to have him uh, built. Probably for the rest of the season. He's 46 right now. But overall, though, I really like this build. I've been doing some work on some Gandalfs. Um, I will say he's been probably my best counter to Gandalf because of the sheer amount of damage he's able to do to him. But also, one thing I want to quickly note is why I like him a little bit more than Theoden. He gets the balanced. He gets two extra skill points, 25 focus, and, and really the big thing is 25 extra might. Um, and also 25 speed, so that helps with his stacking of his abilities. Theoden gets leader, which is 5 command, which is like an additional 250 cataphracts or, you know, bonites, whatever. I seriously think that the bonus 2 skill points that you get, 25 might, focus, and speed, is way better than having leader, in my opinion. So, that's the way I have them set up. Let me show you the battle report that I had. Faramir, you know, absolutely killing it, but let's get down to right here. So this is the battle report that I kind of just want to highlight real quick because this just kind of showcases him in general. I don't know if y'all have faced a Gandalf at any point. Now, I don't have any Tier 4 units. Um, probably would have been a big turnaround if I would have had Tier 4 units, for instance, countering his, you know, full. But look at how many of these are left, you know. And then if you go into the battle report right here and you go to enemy, look at how much damage the Sentinels were able to do. If I would have had flanking in this situation... I would have absolutely decimated his back line. And because I had to break through all of his Iron Warriors, essentially, to get through to the Sentinels. So I feel like if you have him set up correctly all the way at the entry on Respect Level 5, you are going to be able to do some serious damage. Absolutely. Um, overall, though, in my opinion, my opinion, he should be more... Um, more sought after than Theoden. I think people are overhyping Theoden up. Um, I just think that the skill points allotted. Um, I just think that this skill right here is what makes Theoden over everyone else is the renewed um, because of um, the enemy commanders essentially on the evil side. I know give a little bit of madness effects. I should say probably a good deal of madness effects. So I think this is the reason why a lot of people go for him and I don't doubt it's not a good ability. Don't think that I'm not saying that. But I do like, um, I think that also his stat distribution, you know, he gives focus on this, and there's not that much that really goes off of focus for this commander. So, um, that's the reason why I didn't focus on him. He does have Chaotic Retreat, really good ability, though. Um, but yeah, though, that was my, uh, this is my EMR review, slash, um, how to build him like a Chad. And, um, I really hope you enjoyed, and I hope this helps y'all out. I'll see y'all in the next one.